I am an 18 year old student at university. On most days, I consider my generation to be fortunate enough to be able to get a free higher education of our choice. Yet, I never thought I'd be standing here having to defend our most basic fundamental human rights, starting with our right to freedom of expression. I remember seeing a picture of Joseph Muscat paying his respects to Raymond Scarwana at his grave last week, which, I thought, sent a strong message to the people of Malta and Gozo. We must revere those who were murdered for expressing an opinion. It sent a message to the people. Look, whatever your political beliefs are, this was wrong and we need to condemn it together. We cannot allow this type of political climate that enabled the murder to happen to engulf Malta and Gozo again. Now, just to make things clear, most democratic leaders would have done this, and why they may do this, because they genuinely want to pay their respects, other leaders would, might have not agreed with the victim for another, and they would have done this for another crucial reason, a message to the people, a message of action, saying what happened to this person is wrong. Let's condemn it together. <laughs> Joseph Muscat did not do that for Daphne Caruana Galizia's targeted and carefully, carefully planned assassination. He did not think calling for justice was right. He did not shoulder any political responsibility whatsoever. He did not pay his respects to the journalist who paid the highest possible price for exposing corruption, for standing up to criminals. Joseph Muscat had that decision to make, to send the right message to the people through his actions and say, look, this is wrong. Let's all call for justice. And if we had to look at recent history, it's not difficult to make the distinction between those leaders who condemned the journalist's assassination through actions and those who didn't. The ones who don't condemn it are the ones who shrug off the problem, the ones who remain silent or encourage the Minister of Justice, Owen Bonici, to obstruct justice. The ones who remain silent when candles and flowers are removed for over 200 times. And the ones who remain silent while activists are assaulted for calling for justice. The silence Joseph Muscat kept up while Daphne was threatened and harassed is what led to an environment where a journalist was able to be murdered with absolute impunity. This is how oppressive governments behave. Indeed, this government even mimics the likes of China and Russia in their campaigns against human rights. And if we ever want to live in a real, full democracy, we can never accept this type of behavior. When discussing the political situation of our country with most of my peers, many tell me that they would rather not know what is going on because the situation is hopeless. In fact, the situation would be utterly hopeless if it weren't for civil society and journalists, particularly the journalists who form part of the Daphne Project, who continue to ask the tough questions in pursuit of truth and justice. We discuss how politics in Malta has become a playground for the corrupt, for organized crime, for criminals in Castile. Because indeed, in Daphne's own words, a political party that is prepared to attack one journalist to achieve its own ends will think nothing of doing the same to others when they become inconvenient too. This is the reality that we are now living in. Because right now, members of parliament, members of the European parliament, activists, or indeed any citizens who dare to criticize the government, and may I remind you that we are meant to be living in a so-called full democracy, are attacked by this government's propaganda machine, dehumanized, framed, branded as traitors, beaten up, or in the case of foreigners, told to go back to their country.
Last week, Sarah Clark, the advocacy and policy manager of Penn International, called out the government's attempt to whitewash its human rights records when it was highlighting its non-existent commitment to freedom of speech. She was then verbally abused by Alessandro Manjon, the private secretary to the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Carmelo Abela. He called her a biased shithole. For to make a strong stand against this government is to be in favor of freedom of speech and a full democracy. For to make a strong stand against this government in the name of truth, justice and freedom of speech is to be a biased shithole. For this government does not have those principles embedded in its core. These principles are its enemy. We want nothing more than to live in a normal democracy where you are not mocked as being depressed or in sexist terms, a depressed housewife for criticizing your government, where you can exercise your freedom of speech without fearing that you are going to lose your job, be sued unfairly, or have political parties, regardless of whether they occupy the opposition or the government, systematically lash out at you. We want to live in a country where the law is equal for everybody, where criminals like Conrad Mitzi and Keith Chembry are not protected and endorsed by those in power, <laughs> but where they are scrutinized and actually put on trial. We want to live in a country where political parties are not football teams or where still religions, where political parties and the government are accountable to us ordinary citizens and not us to them. That is what it means to live in a real democracy. That is why we will keep fighting, not just for the rights of those present here tonight and the many frightened thousands quietly watching at home. We are fighting for our fun fundamental human rights, meaning the rights of every individual of Malta. Yes, whether they agree with us or not, whether they will assault us or not. We are here to reject the new normal founded in the golden years of Joseph Muscat's government, where crook became statesman, where flowers and candles became provocation, where free became oppressed, where murder became trivial, where right became wrong, and where evil became good. We are proud to be the bias shit holes in the fight for human rights to be upheld in Malta. This is why we will not shut up, because one life lost in this fight is one life too many.